Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian from Men's Comics. Real quick, before we get into this video, I just wanna let you know that this Saturday, October 17th at 2 p.m. Eastern, friends of the channel, 616 Comics at the616comics.com are gonna have a brand new exclusive variant going up for sale. That's right, we are talking about Image hit series coming up, crossover, it just hit FOC this past Monday, but this Saturday, The616 Comics is putting up for sale their exclusive variant for it. It's gonna have two different covers for it, both by monster cover artist, Megan Hutchinson. Can't say enough good things about her. Her art is fantastic. It's gonna have a regular cover that's limited to 500 copies. It's gonna have a trade dress on it, but there's also gonna be a limited to 250 virgin variant that is gonna be available as well. So this Saturday, October 17th, 2 p.m., the616comics.com. Make sure you guys check it out. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian Jack with Civil Man's Comics and this is that new comic book day show. That's right, we call it the Bolo Show, the Be On The Lookout Show. Where we're covering all your new comic book day releases this week. We're covering those first appearances, reader buzz, band buzz, and then Jack's long-term play at the end of this. Jack, you had a good long-term play this week. You wanna give any hints? Yeah, I'll, I'll say that we definitely threw out some hints just this week about the possibility of this being a book to be on the lookout for on the last call show so that's why you got to be watching all of Sippelman's comics programming because you never know when these like little spec nuggets are going to drop and this one came from yourself as a matter of fact i've i hit a base hit every now and then <laughs> <laughs> but yes like jack said we do have to do a lot of comic and pop culture related content on this channel so if you're new here please consider subscribing and with that being said we're going to knock it out right now get into those first appearances First one to talk about on the first appearance and the only one on this list this week is that Captain Marvel number 22. Yeah, now this one has already been confirmed. Like he collectors talking about the first appearance of Sora. We've seen, uh, you know, uh, all your other speculation websites have talked about that because they're just citing uh, key collector. But th there's also a tweet from Lee Gabbett, who's the, uh, the artist on the series saying, Captain Marvel, new arc begins, new characters meet Sora, Bridget, uh, and OVE, um, and they've got some character designs on those. So um, I have not gotten to fully check out this issue yet to see like cameo first full, who appears, who doesn't, all of that. Um, so we'll, we'll be, you know, full disclosure on that one. But um, this is a new arc, new characters, and we're talking children of popular uh, Marvel characters so that always gets you uh, kind of excited uh, including the, you know the the child of Forge and Psylocke so we're talking about X-Men royalty here um, and at this point uh, you know this was when we talked about uh, when the solicit for 23 definitely kind of hinted at new characters Brian made the comment on Friday he said well we've seen this before and this is kind of the point of the the, the last call show is we're trying to show you what we see when we look at solicits when we are looking at previews and the, the the kind of like off the cuff comment that Brian made sort of at the end is so much of what that show is about because it's really it's the way we look at it and Brian instantly said you know when there's a hard tease for a new character a lot of times they fake you out and drop that new character kind of in a cameo form at the end of the previous issue. So you always kind of want to be on the lookout for that one before. So he met Captain Marvel 22. And here we are this week. First appearance. Uh, Sora the Wolf at least. Uh, Bridget and OVE. Let us know in the comment section if we get kind of uh, predominant appearances of them. Um, and uh, if not, uh, that's, we're definitely going to have to be ready for Captain Marvel 23, 24. These are going to be issues to pay attention to. Yeah, definitely. I'm glad you put that disclosure out there that hadn't read the issue because they'd definitely let you know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of talk last week about a uh, uh, solemn. Um, and again, that's why just for the record, we don't play comics politics. It's not our job to name cameo first full. My opinion on that subject doesn't even matter because like we've talked about this regularly, Brian and I are in the camp of Hulk 180 is the first appearance of, of Wolverine. So our opinion doesn't necessarily mean that's what the market's opinion. So you shouldn't necessarily put as much weight into my opinion on what a first appearance is um, so much as what is the market going to name it. And with that being said, that wraps up first appearance, guys. Good night. <laughs>
We got more for you. We're going to get right now into the reader buzz, which is always my favorite section of the week. First one we got coming up from Reader Buzz is from Mad Cave Studios. Big fans of Mad Cave Studios on this channel. I mean, Knights of the Golden Sun, Honor and Curse, that's just two of many, which are coming back December and January, by the way. So stay tuned for that. But we got Villainous number one this week. Not only that, Stargazer number two dropped this week. And with Stargazer and Villainous, we are starting to see the trend that we talked about on 3 Up, 3 Down with Vault Comics because Stargazer sold out at retail, and it looks like Villainous is doing the same. It's gone from Midtown. You can't get it at my comic shop. Um, and this is just a, a – you got to think of the big boys, the biggest shops in the country. They're not ordering enough for the, for the national audience. How do you think your shop – in Ames, Iowa is going to order enough. How do you think your shop, uh, you know, in Evansville, Indiana, or in uh, Sioux Falls, North Dakota, you know, where are, are these shops are not going to order enough villainous. Uh, it, we've made the call to action that we need to get these small press publishers included in the FOC program so that there's more awareness from retailers um, that they're out there. But this is an amazing book. Brian and I have read this book well in advance. Um, it was when we worked on uh, our exclusive variant projects. It was the very first book that we had started kind of working on. Um, you can head to simplemixcomics.com right now, as well as the 616comics.com for this amazing Hal Laren uh, variant for Villainous, uh, 1499 homage to Batman 92, the art germ punchline variant. And yes, that is a very quick homage, and that was done by design. We wanted to be the fastest to market homage in the history of comics, and that's what we aim to do, and I think we may have done it. So uh, real excited about that one, real excited about this series, uh, and, and just excited that Mad Cave is getting their mojo back right before their releases of their uh, returns of their kind of like most uh, acclaimed series, but if you didn't read Stargazer, if you haven't checked out Villainous, do not sleep on these series. Next one on the Reader Buzz this week is Immortal Hulk. We've seen Immortal Hulk back up on the Reader Buzz quite a bit lately, and we're talking about issue number 38 this week. Yeah, and this is one that's going to get people excited because, for two reasons. Number one, because co comic collectors, comic speculators are easy marks. So if you throw a spoiler variant out there, they're going to get all excited. And uh, this was you know, the same situation. We had a spoiler variant all week, and then we get the reveal ahead of New Comic Book Day, and we know that it's the return of Devil Hulk. And that gets people excited because there's some people with some busted spec on Hulk 12 and 13 from back in the day on those Devil Hulk books that they had grabbed for this Immortal Hulk run that didn't quite pan out before they could sell them, myself included. And it's one of those things where it's great to see these things kind of come back around. So Devil Hulk has Immortal Hulk 38 in the public's attention this week. Yeah, this next one on the Reader Buzz, we just talked about this on the 3 Up, 3 Down this week. As a down, just because we thought marketing or the buzz around it wasn't where we thought it would be. We didn't hear much in terms of marketing, but there's been some Reader Buzz, and we're talking about that dynamite number one. Yeah, well, a lot of buzz came in, in the late stages, and I will say it mostly came from websites who report on comics, who were all like looking at this series going – this is a series that we should all be paying attention to. It has everything you want, right? A, a interesting premise, characters that are popular. Um, it has a creative team people are familiar with. It has uh, incredible art, major cover artists like Perillo, um, like, like Peach Momoko. It has like 10 incentives from Peach Momoko, which is insane. Um, and it's just one of those things where everything about it seems like it should be as popular as anything else going on but for whatever the reason um and we have a good idea of what that reason is and it's, it's to do with the comics gate uh controversy not so much that people are choosing not to mess with dynamite because of comics Gate, because that's not really the case i think it's more the case of just negative press kind of slowed down their ability to promote this series so now that they've kind of gotten past the comics gate stuff um they are not able to kind of get this uh, the discussion pivoted to Dynamite. So here they are dropping what probably should be their most excited release of like the last several years. And while, yeah, it's got the interest of some savvy collectors, I think the mass public isn't even really aware of it. And I think that that's unfortunate. It could be a sleeper. It could be one to pay attention to. It's certainly one that we're, we're excited to, to read. Uh, and it's definitely one that there's, there's variants out there for you variant 
hunters and collectors to grab. So um, this is one if you slept on it, maybe uh, pick up a cover A at, at, at your LCS and give it a give it a look. I think you may enjoy it. Then moving on, we're going into DC again. We got the Dark Knight's Death Metal number four. Yeah, and all the talk today has been about the announcements of the animated shorts for Dark Knight's Death Metal. And, of course, David Hasselhoff playing Dark Knight's Death Metal Superman. But uh, either way, you know, I think this is more of a plug-and-play release. People love this series, so they're on board with it. They're grabbing the issues. I think every, every issue from this series has hit reader buzz at the very least, if not some variant buzz from them. There's some great variants. Uh, for this issue, but I, I think that's been par for the course of this series altogether. Um, but yeah, th this is a, this is a popular mini DC's got a winner with this one, and uh, I know that it's animated shorts today. Um, I do think that this is an animated film, or even possibly a future feature length Elseworld kind of thing. Um, I, the 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 Dark Knights Death Metal that whole kind of universe has certainly uh, captured the imagination of the DC Comics uh, buying community. Right, and sticking with DC, this is probably the book that I was most interested to pick up this week. And we're going over to that Rorschach number one, but we're talking about Watchmen and we're talking about Tom King. And Jack, you and I have talked about how many times that we think he's the perfect writer for a book like this. Yeah, and this one is another one you mentioned controversy. It got wrapped up in comic skate controversy as well um, with the Jay Lee cover, but you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we, they got beyond this one. Uh, this has reader buzz written all over it, like you said, coming from that black label. Perfect writer because you can feel how you want about Tom King, but Tom King deals with mental health issues better, in my opinion, than any other writer in comics. And if you're going to be writing Rorschach, that is at, you know, the absolute kind of uh, center of what you're going to need to be writing. Um, so perfect scenario. I think he'll kill it. Also, we've seen him take these kind of like marginalized lesser characters, really elevate them. I expect to see kind of like a Strange Adventures, Mr. Miracle buzz going. Strange Adventures is one done nothing on the secondary market but it, it's getting late printings for every issue because it's selling out and the readers are grabbing it. and that's what tom king does tom king may never move units on a secondary market but he has a core audience that really does react to his books and he does work best when he's playing in these types of um environments and i think that that i hope that this series is successful enough that we get kind of uh, looks at say like the comedian or owl man um, in, in a similar fashion, because I, while I know Alan Moore hates this, I am so on board for more Watchmen. Yeah. And moving from DC over to Marvel, we get amazing Spider-Man number 50, which also has a great variant from our channel sponsor, Frankie's comics, right? That, yeah, that's right. Frankie's comics has been coming with the heat for this entire, uh, uh, storyline where they have put this amazing Spider Gwen uh, cover set together for the last three issues. Um, if you bought the first one, you were locked in and guaranteed to the rest, which I think is really cool. Um, and certainly with some of the problems that they've been having on their website, where you know, with great power comes great responsibility. As as Frankie's has ascended to the top of the variant game, uh, the the mo money mo problems aspect of that has been sellouts. Everything's selling out for them, and it's been very very difficult to keep copies in stock. So super cool the way they went about doing that. Um, but yeah, Amazing Spider-Man fifty is an issue um, that people have been anticipating. Uh, certainly with this lead up to this. Uh, uh, Green Goblin story, the return of Green Goblin, as well as Kindred, uh, and the long-standing speculation about who is Kindred, um, what is Kindred's identity, and we've seen everything, male, female, everything under the sun, and this is the issue where Kindred's secret identity uh, is uh, finally uh, revealed, um, and I don't know. I don't know it, what's going to happen with it going going from here. Will this will this kind of like momentum ASM has been on? Is it going to kind of end now um, that we've gotten the reveal, or is this going to springboard us into more? Now I know that the ASM diehards every time we say that like you know we're not high on ASM, they go and tell us how great this run ha is. And um, Broke Brian and I have said that we look forward to picking up this this storyline especially after um 
the the, the conclusion to kind of check it out in trade form. But uh, ASM has been back hot again. It's been back in, in the limelight. It, it's oh, I guess like I said, I think I mentioned this before. It's kind of like one of those series where it's always kind of better if if Amazing Spider-Man is doing well. It's like Batman. It's kind of better for comics if the if if it's if it's selling and selling well. Um, and uh, we've certainly had that for a string now, three issues in a row. Yeah, especially when it's reader buzz and not variant buzz. I like yes. seeing books on there, especially Amazing Spider-Man for reader buzz. But the next one we're talking about moving over that Star Wars universe with Star Wars Darth Vader number six. Yeah, and this one had a, uh, a lot of buzz um, on it because of uh, uh, some Sith appearances. Um, so the Star Wars speculation crowd right now, I mean, just they are rabid. So anytime anything comes up involving Star Wars, um, first appearance or possibly like, and when we say first appearance, I mean, it doesn't have to be a character. It could be a lightsaber, uh, a, a, you know, a, a new kind of piece of the, the puzzle or story. Uh, people get on board and these issues sell out. So we're, we saw that here with Darth Vader 6. That does not surprise me. Uh, very organic, but the Star Wars buzz is serious. And I really believe, and we've talked about this, Mandalorian is largely at the center of that. Yeah, which we're getting season two in just a couple of weeks, right? October 30th? Yeah. Yep. Next one on the reader buzz, we get that Devil's Red Bride number one. And we talked about this on Three Up, Three Down. This is Vault Comics, sold out at a large retailer. Um, it kind of was a late breaker. A lot of you guys in the community, we talk about this. Again, if you're new to the Bolo Show, we welcome you. If you're new to Simple Men's Comics, we welcome you. We appreciate everybody. Um, this is our new comic book day show where we are letting you know what we are seeing being talked about on social media. This list was originally created based on my checklist that I would hand write as I would walk into LCSs. Um, and I really was just trying to get a snapshot on the idea of what the market was kind of looking at in general. And Devil's Red Bride, as well as the next book we're going to talk about with Vane number one, um, those were two titles from Vault Comics that really weren't on people's radar two, three weeks ago. If I had to make this list based on what people were talking about from this new comic book day, say around previews time, they wouldn't have been on this list. But not only are they on this list, they're two of kind of like the most exciting releases because not only are they garnering major reader buzz, but they're also selling out and look like they're going to do well in the back issue market. Um, so this is something to pay attention to and be on the lookout for. We are going to have more uh, Vault number ones coming. We're going to be uh, covering two this week in the blackcapecomics.com um, uh, kind of indie showcase section of the last call show, the final order cutoff show on Friday night. So be on the lookout for that. Definitely don't, don't sleep on these uh, independent small press series. You got to pre-order because if you wait till new comic book day, you are going to be one of these guys chasing. If you hit your LCS today, I'm sure you had a tough time finding vault unless your LCS is one of those kind of forward thinking indie focused stores, but those are few and far between. And you kind of have to be in metropolitan big cities a lot of times for those. That's going to wrap us up for the reader buzz this week, but we got some variants to talk about, don't we? Oh, yeah. And you mentioned that reader buzz may be your favorite section. This may be mine. First one we're going to talk about in that variant buzz section is that Walking Dead number one deluxe, that gold one per store variant. Yeah, and we're starting to see this with Skybound Comics as like a consistent thank you to retailers that Robert Kirkman has been putting out there where... He puts out a major release like he did with Negan Lives um, or Firepower. And after retailers have ordered and when they're not expe expecting it a week later, a one per store variant shows up. We've also seen Todd McFarlane do this with Spawn. Um, and certainly, I don't think there's a coincidence there. Those two guys work hand in hand pretty regularly. Um, and it seems to be a great way to show appreciation and thanks to retailers who are supporting these creator-owned projects. Um, and it's been great for retailers because they've been able to get back issue gold for these, these issues. Um, and limited one per store gold foil etching on the cover. That's kind of all it takes to get the back issue market excited. And if you're a walking dead collector, certainly, um, yeah, there's been a lot of store exclusives, but this is kind of like the first almost incentive variant 
of a Walking Dead number one, you could argue. So there's, there is credence to this being something of note and something of value, and it's definitely worth picking up. So check with your LCS if you're, if you're at um, the shop this week, because it may be one that a lot of people are overlooking because they don't realize that it's out. This is not one per store variant. We also have a Vampirella number 14 Peach Momoko sneak peek variant, right? Yeah, so Peach Momoko, who just signed her Marvel exclusive, which is unfortunate for Dynamite because they're really starting to roll out some Peach Momoko stuff. They are going to start doing Peach Momoko incentives on Vampirella for issue 15, 16, and 17. And because of that, um, they were able to kind of get in a last second one here for this um, uh this sneak peek variant uh and I, I like it i think it's a great cover and it, it's it's interesting the way they dropped it they called it a sneak peek but essentially it was like an foc variant it came out at the last second uh i think foc day or day before foc type thing um so this is one that's going to get overlooked uh it wasn't necessarily a difficult to obtain book if you're already ordering um uh, Vampirella 14, but it may be one that people weren't realized if they got their orders in early or what have you. They may not realize that this book even exists. And getting over to DC, we talked about three jokers. We got some three jokers number one second prints, right? Yeah, second prints. We're going to be talking about them uh, for a little bit on the rest of the show, but three jokers, DC Comics finally did a little cover change, but they kept with their kind of theme of these. Uh, these uh, Brian Boland Joker covers. Um, this one was more for the completionist. I don't think too many people missed out on three Jokers number one. I think most shops still have copies um, sitting on the shelf because that's one of those books. You don't buy that for the week it releases. You buy that book for the long term. That's a book you're going to want to have in your store six months from now when someone walks into the shop. So um, it's going to be a book that I think you're, is going to be available, but that second print, was for those variant collectors who are trying to get all of those Joker Boland variants. Right. And just like Jack said with the second prints, we also like Marvel tends to do. We got those Marvel late printings that came out this week. That's right. I mean, there were so many of them and so many of note that I saw people reposting and talking about that. We really couldn't individually um, give them the attention that they probably deserved. And I needed to kind of, put them all together uh sort of how we do on the last call show at the end because man yeah marvel is going nuts running these things out they're creating late printings because of uh sellouts for reader buzz they're creating late printings for cover art opportunities they're creating for more late money printings. yeah they're 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 soliciting some late printings before the first print has even sold out so all kinds of reasons we're getting uh we're getting late printings but um some of the the kind of ones of note to pay attention to this week uh certainly include of course thor coming back um and getting some late printings uh we've got thor number th uh three the fifth print thor number four the fourth print um thor number uh one a fourth print uh there's also Wraith, uh, number one, uh, the, the, uh, second print. So there's several others too. You, you're going to continue to see this. Uh, Marvel has been running these late printings out and they haven't always done well, like immediate, but it's one of those things. These are long-term grabs. These are as Brian likes to call it. And I love this term lottery ticket pickups for me, um, because I'm willing to grab these. This is a scarcity issue. This is a cover art issue. If you see one where the cover art speaks to you, it probably speaks to other people. If you, it, and the, a lot of these late printings, people get to a point where they get desensitized to it. Stores aren't ordering uh, Thor number one to have like reader on their shelf. So at this point they've moved on most stores, um, although maybe they should, but they're not. And, and you got to wonder how many fourth prints are going to truly exist of Thor number one. And then will there come a time where people want that book? Right, this is the last one we're talking about. This is one we normally hate, right? We normally hate when they just do a color change, but i going against the grain on this one, and I like this one, and we're talking about that Stillwater number one second print. It's just a color change, but I actually really like it. Interesting you say that. I do, too. Um, I think it's because of the simplicity of the regular cover. Um, but Stillwater is an incredible series. I think it's, it's being slept on. It went up to about $15 for the first print and then dropped down to about 10 and this happens sometimes with image series because it was it was gone. You couldn't get it on release day. 
Uh, so it went up to $15. And then as people started getting like their Midtown orders and their DCBS orders, you started to see some of that price drop. But Stillwater is an ongoing series. It's not a mini series. And most of these independent indie releases these days are mini series. It's coming from Skybound, who has that first look deal with Amazon. And we're already seeing so much coming from Skybound and Amazon. Amazon really is looking to ramp up comic book content, especially with the success of The Boys, to, to compete with Netflix, compete with Disney+. Plus. Uh, I think that if you've read the first issue, if you've read any of the advanced issues beyond that, this is a series that's going to lend itself to TV or movies. Uh, Chip Zdarsky is an amazing writer, so it's a great, fun series. Um, and I, I think that this is going to be one I pay attention to. And you know why I really like this second print, Brian? This is going to get slept on for a long time. But when this gets optioned, people are going to realize I, something that I suspect about this second print. I think this second print is going to have a micro print run. I do not see a ton of people jumping on ordering the second print with just that simple color change. Um, image you don't tend to see like a lot of like late 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 printings except on like big iconic books so if they don't do a third print that second print could end up having a micro print run and we already have seen that the first print doesn't have enough copies to really satisfy demand so there's only time will tell but this is a long-term play i like yeah, let us know in the comments, did you pick up the second print for today? Did you pick up the second print and you already had the first print? Or did you pick up the second print because you didn't get the first print? Great let question. us know either way. Still, like Jack said, Stillwater's a great story. Huge Chip Zdarsky fan. So I'm always glad to pick that up. But we've gone through first appearances. We've gone through reader buzz. We just went through variant buzz. That's going to leave us now with Jack's long-term play. Long-term play this week is what we discussed at the very beginning of the show, and that's right, Jack's long-term play is that Captain Marvel number 22. Yeah, you know, at this point, uh, I am, um, listen, I can be a slow learner, but I get it eventually. So, you know, at first, I, I was a little skeptical in this Captain Marvel run with their, their seemingly um, focus on introducing new characters. But, you know, it's one of those things where we, we saw it with Star, we saw it with Laurel. I'm on board for these new characters. I'm on board for the fact that they tie into existing characters and they tie into existing storylines. Brian and I are very bullish on the future of comics in that, number one, we don't think comics are going anywhere. We don't think publishing is going anywhere. We don't think comic film is going anywhere. We, we don't think that uh, you're going to be able to tell the same stories with the same characters forever. So we are firm believers that these young characters are the future. Not just the future from the publishing side of comics, but also the future of film franchises and the future of the attention of the, I hate to use this word again, future comic buyers that are young at this point. But, uh, you know, you've seen it with Miles Morales. You've seen it with Spider-Gwen where a new generation adopts a character and people can get on board with Spider-Gwen or Miles Morales all they want today. Uh, I don't think people remember when these characters were created and some of the shit that was talked by the general public about both of these characters. I specifically remember firsthand Spider-Gwen being looked at as like a joke and a silly character and stupid and not something we needed. Um, and now it's turned into an iconic character who is giving a, a peek inside the world of Spider-Man to an entire gender. Um, so it, this is a, one of those things where uh, I think that uh, you have to kind of look at these new characters and say, um, it's a lottery ticket. And we've talked about that a couple of times on the show. Um, it's not something I can't, I'm not going to sit here and like waste my time trying to sell you, waste your time, I should say, trying to sell you on the individual characters. We don't know. Like, I don't, the writers could love these characters, right? But Marvel has to love them. The publishing, the editors have to love them. Other editors have to take them and say, hey, I like that character that you created, that Psylocke's daughter. I'm going to use her. Jonathan Hickman, I say, I'm going to use her in my, um, in my next X crossover story. And if that happens and things like that, if somebody gets their own series, those sort of things. But uh, at this point, it's very clear that Captain Marvel is important to the Marvel, not just publishing, but MCU and and Marvel as a whole. And it's important that they, they build out this world around her and they're going to keep doing it. So I got to be honest with you, I'm on board at this point. Anything that they put out there, uh, first appearance, if the character seems like a character um, of note, I'm down for that lottery ticket. And, and I, it's one of those things where, am I grabbing, and to give you guys an example, like, am I grabbing, and I've talked about big time specs, am I grabbing 100 Captain Marvel 22s? No. 
Um, am I am I loading up on a hundred of any book? <laughs> no, but we we both know that my crazy ass has been known to do that from time to time, and uh, and this isn't one where I sit there and go, oh, this is so solid, sign me up for a hundred. Um, but it is one where I will grab four or five and put it in a box and I'll feel good about it. And I'll probably grab the late printings if they do late printings with, with uh, cover changes. But um, I think at this point, Captain Marvel, I'm real bullish on this series. I think that the writers and, and artists have really done something and accomplished something throughout the series. And here's the other thing, and you can attest to this, Brian, whether you believe in the spec of these characters or not, this has been a good read. Yes. I will admit to that when they first came out, I will admit to not wanting to read it and not caring for it, but went and picked it up in trade and enjoyed it. So definitely picking this up as well. Um, more of a reader buzz, but the fact that his first appearance, like you said, I'll pick up probably two or three copies and, and stash them away. So there we have it. There's Jack's long-term play as well as the rest of the be on the lookout list or Bolo list as we like to call it. Let us know you, the viewer, what books did you guys pick up this week? What was your favorite book that you read this week? And then also what was your favorite variant? We always like to hear the comments with hear what other collectors, like we always say, it's one big community out there. So let us know. With that being said, this is Brian Jack with some men's comics. See you guys in the next video.